Have you guys seen a third year sentiment blog? Hey, what's up, Reefers? Welcome to my man cave, aka the basement. It doesn't look like much right now, but I got the okay to start moving the fish tank down here and basically set up this space however I see fit. Of course, this will include all my YouTube and Instagram related stuff. Basically, I'll start producing video probably down here soon. Once I get this place situated, I'll be looking for decors and stuff like that on the wall, so I'll be on the lookout. So I guess I'll be on the lookout online. Uh, for a poster and whatnot, that'll look cool. Pick up where we left off last time with the 145 gallon infinity tank with the help of uh, some of my friends and uh, Reef Sensei Telegram, we're able to get the stand set up, leveled, and also we got the sump tucked in place and I also pop in the Vertex I-180. The skimmer actually fits perfectly in the sump um, and it actually fits the whole color theme, which is uh, red and white perfectly. And we're gonna talk about plumbing real quick. But let's swing over here real quick. Some of you guys may be wondering, what am I gonna do with the uh, DIY stand I spent a year and a half building? First of all, the tank is gone. Um, a local, well, semi-local reefer came by and picked it up. Gonna reseal it and put it to good use. He's a fantastic guy. If you're watching this, please let me know how it's going, if you need any help at all. So the stand, I'm gonna keep as a workbench um, that I plan to park next to the tank. I'm gonna do some like fragging and stuff like that on there and possibly putting a frag tank on there as well. Moving down here, the Fiji cube sump that I love. So I was torn, I was debating whether to use this, this sump or the one that came with the, uh, the tank. I ultimately decided to go with the one that um, came to stand simply because it just fits the dimension well versus the Fiji cube because I had to kind of conform to the previous tank's dimension. So for that system, I'm gonna stick with the sump that came with the tank but I'm gonna set up probably a frag tank, a separate system that's a little bit smaller that will put this sump, this sump to use. So in a couple of months, we're gonna see this Fiji Cube 30 back in action. You guys hear that? That's my boss walking around upstairs. One thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the plumbing of this tank right here. As you know, I know nothing about plumbing. I'm just starting to learn, um, working on the 150, and I'm a sole learner. <laughs> so I started maybe like two days ago. I just started dry plum. Oh my God, what the hell is that? So this Infinity 135 tank came with all the necessary plumbing, uh, including all the elbows and uh, gate valves and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to put things together, just dry fitting, no gluing yet, to the best of my ability. It did not come with instruction. I was sure that I could find something online, uh, but I figured I'd kind of give it a shot first to see what I come up with. So this is the mess um, that actually me and my wife sat down and did this together. I, I started first and then she came down, laughed at my effort and then uh, she put her head into it and this is what we came up with. I gave her some false information, meaning that which which need, which parts needs to be up there. Uh, so she worked within it and was able to somehow make those two pipe end up in the first chamber. I think it's called a crash chamber or something like that of a song. So she did her parts. It looks kind of goofy, but actually functionally it actually works. I was talking to um, some of the other guys and um, Antonio uh, about this. I was sending like videos and photos like, hey, dude, is this right? Does it look right? But it seems to be functional. Um, and that's when like Antonio sent me a photo cap of the one he plumbed. He was like, yeah, man, uh, I think the way you did it looks really different from what I did. <laughs> I was like, okay. But around the same time, somebody from Instagram also DM me with a photo from Motochrome's website showing exactly how this was supposed to be plumbed. But I just wanna like kinda show you guys this first because I thought this is kinda hilarious. The next morning. Emily has a challenge. So let's take out the panel first. Yeah, just pour it up. Just like lean it, I guess lean it against here. Let's take out that one too so it's we easier to see stuff. So this morning you saw that I was struggling to put all the pipes together. You, not me. I was fine, I was. We got the final blueprint from hey, oh, from Antonio Eat Sleep Brief as well as Mold Aquariums. Uh, so I was able to put it together like so. But it is still slightly off. It does a lot better. This look, actually looks really good. But ideally this should be the same height. The problem is that this pipe right here, the main drain, is a little bit lower than what's shown in the picture. It should be a little bit shorter. I feel like I've done the best to my ability, but Emily was like, ah, there's just like an easy tweak and you'll be able to do this. And she swears that she can do this. And we had a bet. What's a bet? What's a wager? You will not pay me 500 bucks. So she's making me pay her $500 if she can somehow fix it. 
Again, the only thing that's off is that this is a little bit too low. It drops a little bit too low. It should be the same, a little bit higher, same height as this. So when you look at it from the front, it looks like just one line going on. These are pretty much all set. I'm super happy with this, but she insists that she can make it a little bit better. It looks just like the picture, where this one's supposed to be a little bit shorter. I was gonna maybe cut this if necessary. She's telling me like people in Hong Kong, like kids in Hong Kong, they play with pipes because they got nothing else to play with as a childhood, as kids. Computer. So when you pull it, just be careful, okay? Because like you, you don't want to yank. Legally, my man, chin chile. Listen, I mean, I'll probably mong chile. Hold it, please. I'll do that for you. Alright, watch out. So you get these pipes to play with as well. What about this? Ah, limits. <laughs> Closed for business. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm gonna uh, forward her the photo, like of how it's supposed to look. And then, we'll, I guess we'll give her some time and she'll work her magic and try to earn those 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah, she's not getting it. Wait, what, what is this for? See, she doesn't even know what the hell is going on. The sucky part is that she, we took it all apart now I gotta tr figure it out again to put it back together. <laughs> that's, that's struggling. <laughs> not that easy, huh? One hour later. Alright, record it, we'll do it live. I haven't watched it. No, no hold it, hold it, hold it. It's a version two! <laughs> <laughs> you swear this is it? No, okay. I didn't we'll say do, that. We'll do the review. We didn't say okay. the the parallel. No way. The parallel. Screw it tight. Mm. Okay, it's tight. How's it looking? It's all about angles. <laughs> that look, that look worse. Is that how good that works? That, okay, is that a worse or exactly the same? Exactly the same. I feel like it's worse. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Wait, wait, did you smell that? Yeah, I smell some bullshit. That's what I smell. <laughs> it look exactly the same. That's how I left yeah, it. Same, it looked same. exactly no, the same. same. She took it apart, put it together, and it looked exactly the same. It's and then she had just exposed. It's okay. parallel now. She has a. <laughs> it's about the angle. It's parallel. It's about the angle. She claims that if you take a picture from here, exactly. from over here. Wait, what happened? Oh, I'm gonna keep. Okay, he's crying. It's not good. It's the bottom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You got torture, right? Mm -hmm. abuse. Domestic abuse. Bottom line, bottom line is she cannot come up with a better solution. It is what it is. The piping we got. Oh, look, he doesn't sucks. agree. Yeah. He doesn't agree. That's okay. We're getting five hundred bucks anyway. All right, guys. So we got Leon settled. Um, but basically, <laughs> well, like this. Okay. Better. So basically, uh, we tried again, and she came up with the exact same solution, go, going according to what we have and the. Uh, chart. I guess I'll take a picture of a video of it. I'll put it up, make sure it's okay. I think functionally it's fine. It's just OCD. It would be nice if everything's kind of line. But after I look at it for a while, it's like, mm, it looks kind of cool too. I want to get the thumbs up for, from the, the people in the nose. Then I guess I'm going to start gluing it down and then we'll start putting water in the tank. Right? 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 Oh, not pointing your Right? Right. Oh, by the way, that means she did not want the 500 bucks. No. One week later. Morning guys, today's mission is to replace most of the filters on this Audi unit. I got the BLS 4 stage. The reason I do that is because the ICP test from a couple months ago showed some weird results from the source water. I use the ATI ICP test. They also test the source water on top of the tank water. And I think I was getting some, some like phosphorus or something like that. I'll double check and put it in the caption right here. Uh, what value was elevated. So today we're going to refresh this whole unit. Uh, I got the, the most important AO filter. We got carbon block and also the sentiments. Uh, sediment block as well. The color changing DI resin is still good. Most of them are still blue. Only the bottom portion is brown, so that should be all right. I was debating whether to step up in terms of the owl filter, but ultimately I was like, I right, just stick with the 75. Later on, I'm gonna probably add a water saver kit as well, just to just so that we don't waste as much water. And to do that, I'm actually watching Millie's Reef. Mark, Mark, you're helping me out. Thank you, sir. These are called the pre filters. Pre filters. Filter the membrane. There you go. Then to replace the DI, you would use Hold on, that's slightly different. His DI is all the way over here. You got like a four four canister kind of deal. You got a fancy stuff. 
Have you guys seen a third year sentiment block? This is insane, dude. I didn't think it'd be this dirty. I should've done this a long time ago. I'm currently trying to open the old canister. Holy crap, man. But Mark has some nice tip. I do have the strap right here, so hopefully I can uh, do this myself. Um, I also got some grips. So I'm gonna strap this side down, use a grip on here and see if I can kind of just muscle it open. Even in the video, Mark was saying that it would be really tough to open if it's set for a year undisturbed. Uh, this has been sitting for, oh crap, it's leaking. It's been sitting for about three years, so it's probably welded shut. I was able to successfully replace those filters, so this is the final boss. Damn guys, I can't believe I actually did it. I was using my feet, I'm using the strap wrench and like putting my whole body weight in it. I actually did it? Fuck, I think it just, I think my feet just kind of slipped. Hold on, let me see. Nah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was struggling with it for literally half an hour, no joke. Look at all the tools I got. Ah oh, man, finally, and supposedly I need a needle wrench plier. Oh, fudge, where did this old wing come from? Uh, I assume it goes on here. All right, well, I guess we'll find out. Oh yeah, this tight. Okay, that's why it has really smooth too. Okay, that's why people say to use a needle nose plier. Yep. All right, and I don't run upstairs to a two box. Moment of truth, just turn the water on. Filled up the cinnamon chamber already. Filled up the common block. What is that sound? Okay, filled the cup. Okay, all right, I see all the way up here. No leak, good, good. And it's also going through the booster pump. I installed that pretty recently when I was uh, revamping this whole thing. Okay. So I need to mount this properly on that wall right there. I also plan to get the water saver kit. So once I get that, I know better like what the layout I want and we'll mount the whole thing on the wall. So that's all the cleaner. Although this whole thing is pretty pretty heavy. So I need to find the uh, the stud, the stud. <laughs> all right, things looks good. And water pressure is sitting at around, yeah, sitting around 90, I ex expect it. And let me turn on the, so I got one of these um, earlier RDI unit that actually came with the, uh, TDS meter for in and out. So this is coming in is what, like 54? 54 is dropping. So I think it's uh, it's working its way out. And output is zero, good. Uh, the number is going slowly going down. I'm gonna do some quick research on Google. To see how long I need to run this filter for before I can start using the water. And the other reason I started uh, focusing on the RDI unit is because certain corals, uh, namely the frog spawn, it's not doing too hot in the budget nano tank and the mangrove tank. It's it just kind of weird because everything else is doing good and um, I'm just kind of running down the list. I, I thought to myself, okay, the last time I did the uh, ICP test, there's a certain value that was really high on my um, source water. So we got a long weekend. I was like, okay, well, let's uh, let's address this. Uh, we'll knock things out one at a time to see if this was it. I'm gonna run about five gallon of water through the LDI unit to kind of flush out all the remaining stuff. And then we're gonna get some nice fresh water. We're gonna heat it up and then we're gonna do some water change for two tanks. Hopefully uh, things will improve. Uh, specifically for the frog spawn. They're not too happy. Well, the tank island is okay, but the mangrove tank is just not happy. So let's really quickly talk about this tank right here as well. So like you see earlier in this video, the dry fitting for the plumbing is done. I have every intention to kind of cement everything, set everything, and then just flood the tank. Now, the only issue right now is I'm waiting for the uh, auto top off container to arrive. Yeah, it's actually a glass container. That's basically is a set with the sump and they're supposed to fit perfectly under the stand. As you can see down here, the way the plumbing is gives me really little wiggle room um, for the sump to go. So I want to make sure that, yes, the sump is gonna fit and the adhesive container is gonna fit. I don't know how. For example, if I need to shift the whole sump over like a couple inches in order to fit the ATO on one side, then I may have to replace some of the piping to something a little bit longer, like this one right here. And that's really the only reason I've not really cemented all the PV PVC pipe downs yet and flood the tank. I just want to make sure everything fits nicely under the stand um, before I have everything set. Which may actually work out to my favor because this gives me a chance to get some feedback from you guys as well. I've asked on Instagram already. For the most part, people give us like, oh yeah, yeah, plumbing is good. But also want to ask like you guys on YouTube to take a look and kind of like double check my plumbing to make sure everything is good before I cement them down. Because once they're cemented, it's gonna be really tough to change. So with that in mind, let me just give you one really quick last look. Really quickly, let's talk about the drain because the drain is where most of my question is. Well, the main drain actually came with this top right here. So the main drain originally had this on the top. After talking to Antonio, if he recommended maybe like removing this and then you doing a Herbie instead, uh, meaning that there'll be full drainage on here and then there'll be a trickle of water 
on the emergency drain. In order for that to happen though, I may have to cut down, uh, cut the emergency drain a little bit lower. Based on how the thing is run, I may have to cut the emergency drain a little bit lower. Now slide to the overflow box. And the pipe closer to us is the main drain. We got a gate valve right here controlling the flow. And then it comes over here, this elbow, and then goes straight down to the crash chamber. And coming a little bit from the front, we'll see that is the emergency drain, same deal. Kind of come over here and just go into the first chamber. It's pretty straightforward. Let me know what you guys think. Sliding over here, this is a return. Uh, return pump go over here, it's split in two. And the two guys basically, just come right up here and spits out right here. Now I've got a recommendation on possibly installing a gate valve um, on the shorter end of this uh, return in order to control the flow between the two, uh, two nozzles right here. I still need one more by the way. So I thought about it, I raised the same questions on Instagram, I got some DMs back. The consent seems to be like it doesn't really matter too much if one side have more flow than the other one or it doesn't make too much of a difference. So uh, my thought is to just kind of keep things simple. If we have stronger flow on one side, that's fine because I feel like I'm just using the returns to kind of cycle the water between the sump and the main tank. It's not going to be uh, for like water circulation in the tank. For that, I may have one or two MP40s. The other question is the uh, skimmer. So I got this uh, Omega 180i skimmer from Vertex. Vertex actually recently went out of business. They built some like fantastic products, but unfortunately things just didn't pan out, especially with the last controller, which is really unfortunate because in the past, whenever I thought of Vertex, I always thought like they have some quality product. But either way, the legacy kind of live on with this skimmer right here. We got a Vertex Omega 180i sitting right here. I may need to raise this skimmer up. So I may put like a, a Marine Pure Block Media down there or something to kind of prop it up a little bit. But we'll see, we'll see when we fill this sump of water to see how high this sits. And this chamber, I'm gonna make it into like a large refugium. I may do like a straight up all Dragon Breath macro uh, refugium, like how Top Shelf Aquatic had before. Or I may do a full Xenia refugium. I hear some people use that as a uh, nutrient export as well, which will be super cool. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Or maybe, hey, how about all clams, right? All clams. <laughs> so, anyways, we're getting a little crazy here. Anyways, that'll be refugium and then return pump. This system is pretty straightforward. I avoided using manifold because I feel like uh, I may not use it. I feel like it's kind of it's, it's kind of complicated. I want to just start with the basic first and see how things goes. All right, so that's where we sit with this uh, 135 gallon mold aquarium built at the moment. I wish I'm a little bit further along the way, but I just don't want to rush it and regret it later on. So we got the plumbing dry fitted, waiting for the ATO container to see if it fits within the stand, and then we'll cement everything down and then start filling it with water. We're almost there. It's like within reach, but uh, just a little bit. By the time the next video comes out for this tank, it should be filled with water. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little update on the 135 gallon tank, and I'll see you next Sunday at 12.50 p.m. Ciao, bye. All right, guys, we're gonna get them acclimated. Oh, <laughs>